given. Oh, well, there's another step. Sin be condemned. Finally receive forgiveness. Maybe a week later, crawl out from under the condemnation. Now, sin be condemned. Ask God to forgive you. Another week or two weeks of suffering, crawl out from under the condemnation. Sin. Is anybody hearing me? God's got a better plan than that for us because the Bible says that we are dead to sin. Now, God hates sin, but he loves sinners. And the title of this book is God is not mad at you, and God is not mad at you. But God does get mad about sin. And he gets mad about sin, and he gets mad about the sin in our lives, not because of what it does to him, but because of what it does to us. God is firmly set that he wants us to have a good life. And he paid for us to have it by sending his only son to die for us. An unbelievably painful death. Took all of our sins upon himself, that holy, righteous son of God, taking all of our sin upon himself, becoming sin for us, that we might have a great life. The thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that they might have and enjoy their life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. And I love what the Apostle Paul said. I am determined, now listen to this, this is in, this is in Philippians 3. I am determined to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus died to take hold of me. Come on, get that. I am determined. You got to have some determination if you are going to live a godly life, especially in the world that we live in today. And I'm sure every preacher in every generation would have said that, but I'm telling you what, the longer the world is around, the worse it gets. So however bad it was 100 years ago, it is worse today. And we are going to have to want godliness because there is compromise everywhere that we look. Amen. Amen. And we dare not just float along with everybody else. We have to stand up and be counted. Amen. I'm determined to take hold of that. For which Christ Jesus died to take hold of me. I believe that God deserves our best. I don't think he should get some kind of half-baked, puny, whiny, anemic effort I think that God deserves our very best. And thankfully, when we do mess up, which is frequently, we can always repent, be quick to repent. He forgives us. It's as if we never did it. But let's don't just be satisfied to live like that. Amen. I want to stir you up today to say I am not satisfied to just be mediocre. I am not satisfied to be average. I am not satisfied to spend my whole life sinning, being condemned, finally being forgiven, getting out from under the condemnation, doing it all over again. I want to grow in higher levels of holiness. And let me say this right on. Holiness is not following a bunch of rules and regulations. This is what holiness is, being led by the Holy Spirit. That's, what holy, that's, that's all that holiness really is, because the Holy One lives in us, and we don't have the law on stone tablets anymore. By the way, it came on stone tablets because it was hard, and it hardened people's hearts. Now, God has given us a soft and a tender heart toward Him, and He has written the law of God in our hearts, and He's given us His Holy Spirit to assure us that we can keep it if we want to. Today, we're going to work on our want to. And I hope to be able to get something across, and you can agree or not agree. I don't know. Every once in a while, I get bold and say, it's my meeting, so I'm going to say what I want to. But I'm, first of all, anything that God has told us to do, He will give us the ability to do it. How many of you will agree with that? Now, I want you to pay attention to what you just agreed to. Do you know what you just said yes to? Anything that God asks us to do, we have the ability to do it. Well, we could just stop there and just say amen and go home because, see, we don't really believe that. It's like, otherwise, we wouldn't just say all the time, well, I can't, it's too hard, 
I mean, I, I, well, I know, and, you know, me, me, and I, you know, just hard, and, well, you know, I, I, I got a bondage in that area, and, you know, I, I, I'm addicted, and it, I just can't help it. It's the way I was raised, and... I want you to listen to what you just said. You said, I believe <laughs> that anything God asks me to do, I can do, that he it. gives me the ability to do it. So we have the ability to forgive anybody who hurts us. So therefore, there's no reason for anybody in this room or anybody watching my television to be mad at anybody. I got lots of energy in the morning. Get ready. <laughs> said I believe <laughs> and I mean it does make sense why in the world would God tell me to do something and then stand back and laugh at me because I couldn't do it why would he say forgive people why would he say be kind be patient be generous why would he give me all these instructions be a woman of prayer Study the Word of God. Be full of the Word. Help other people. Forget about yourself and live a life of helping other people. Wow, bless God, what about me? Well, you know, if you do that, then people are just going to take advantage of you. No, we need to stop making excuses, and we just need to get about saying, if God said it, He has given me the ability to do it, and by His grace, by His power, I can do whatever God asks me to do. So here's what we really have. We have a want to problem. Oh, I feel feisty today. And you know, we don't want to think that we don't pray because we don't want to. We don't want to think that we don't spend regular quality time with God because we don't want to. I mean, can you imagine just saying to God, I don't spend any time with you because I don't want to. Well, nobody's going to do that. We're going to have a whole bunch of excuses, but that's all they are, really, is excuses. And an excuse, by the way, is a reason stuffed with a lie. God loves us so much, and my goodness, the price that he has paid for us to have the opportunity to live the kind of life that's being offered to us. It is nothing short of a tragic shame if we don't literally put our whole selves into being what God has given us the opportunity to be. Whether I do or don't is not going to change God. God is. This is my opportunity. You know, Joshua said, you decide for yourself what you're going to do, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And to be honest, I, you know, I'm going to have to think this over some, but I was, I was pondering this a little bit last night and this morning. I don't think we really hear very much teaching about the will of man. <laughs> you know, we hear a lot about the grace of God. I teach all the time on the grace of God, and I know I can't do anything apart from God. But I do believe that whatever he asks me to do, that I can do it. I can't do it without him. But I can do it with him, and he is with me all the time. And I do believe that whatever God asks me to do, I'm able to do it. So I've just kind of given up all the dumb excuses. It took me a long time, but I can help you fast forward your spiritual walk if you'll listen to me. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You won't have to waste as much time as I did if you listen. God loves us tremendously. And one of the greatest, now listen to me, one of the greatest honors that God has given us is free will. I set before you life and death. Choose life. He even told us the answer. We didn't even have to figure it out ourselves. It's like, hello? Well, should I choose life or should I choose death? This is really difficult. <laughs> I said before you, life and death, choose life that you and your descendants might live. Yes. 
We've had our children come to us, different ones of them at different times, and say, Mom, Dad, thank you for pressing through and paying the price that you paid. Because if you wouldn't have pressed in, I wouldn't have the life that I have today. When you make right decisions, it does not just affect you. It affects your children and it affects your grandchildren. I set before you life and death. Choose. Now, having free will, awesome. <laughs> Man, I can do what I want to. But having a free will is also an unbelievably huge responsibility. God has already said he loves us. He loves us unconditionally. That's a settled fact. God's going to love us no matter what we do. But I'm going to put another question out to you. Do you love God? With... The greatest commandment is you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. That's the greatest, the most important commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all. With all that you've got. With your time, with your money, with your thoughts, with your habits, with your entertainments. You just have to excuse me, but I just flat out am in love with God. I mean, I just can't help it. I am in love with God. I don't just love Him. I am in love with Him. And you know, God spends years and years in our life establishing that relationship with Him. I love you. I'll give you mercy. I'll provide for you. I'll give you grace. And then there comes a time, just like any parent would like to hear a child come around and say, Mom, Dad, what can I do for you? If we never get around to that, then it's all just a one-sided thing where the kid is just, gimme, 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 gimme. Right. I'm in trouble once again, mom and dad, can you get me out? And that's not a satisfying relationship. We want our children to come and say, what can I do for you? I have children now that are in my house every day. Do you need anything? Can I get you anything? Is there anything you need? They take care of us and I'm like, yes. Yes. My one daughter that helps me, she'll call me in the morning and say, uh, um, I'll say to her, what are you doing today? She'll say, well, what do you need me to do? Oh, oh my gosh, that is so wonderful. And God wants to hear us say every morning, what do you need me to do today, God? What do you need me for today? Can I do something for you Today, would you at least begin there by adding that to your prayer list? God, what can I do for you today? Come on, somebody give God praise. So what are we going to do about sin? Well, it's impossible to be free from it unless we hate it. So everybody just for practice say, I hate sin. I hate what it does to people. I hate what it does to me. I hate what it's done to the world. I hate what it's done to people. And if you want to know the truth, I hate the devil. Because he is the root of all of it. Now listen, I'm going to read you a little bit of this Joyce Meyer book. <laughs> Although we know that all manner of sin can be forgiven, and there is no amount of sin that can prevent us from having a wonderful relationship with God, we still do need to deal with our sin. So what are we going to do about it? What should our attitude be toward it? And that's really the thing that I want to get across today is what should our attitude be toward sin? I believe that we must hate it just as God does and that we must resist it steadfastly in the power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot be filled with God's Spirit and ever be satisfied with a life of sin and compromise. Although we should hate sin, we should never hate ourselves because we sin. God hates sin, but he loves sinners. Now, I want you to listen to this next little bit here. Only a mature believer is able to squarely face their sin and not feel condemned. Yeah. 
And if people really knew who they were in Christ, they would not mind strong, fiery preaching. I listened to a teaching tape by a guy the other day, and I mean, he was tearing it up. And I loved it. You know why? Because I don't mind at all facing my faults and weaknesses. I want to know because I already know that God's love for me is not based on what I do right or wrong. He's going to love me either way, but I want to know if there's something there that needs to be fixed because I want to do that for Him. I don't want to live a sloppy life or just do what I can get by with. Please, God, if I'm doing something that offends you, tell me. I don't want to do that. I'm talking to you today about a heart attitude. Do you have any idea how much compromise is going on in the world today? And even in the church. Come on. We should not be asking the question, what all can I get by with and still sneak into heaven? That should never be on our mind. Can I do that and still go to heaven? Can I do that and still go to heaven? No, that should not be the cry of our heart. The cry of our heart should be, God, how can I be what you want me to be so I can be a bright light shining out in the dark one? I'm not talking about being like some kind of religious prune. I'm talking about getting out there and being a living example of how wonderful it is to serve God. I am excited about God. Only a mature believer is able to squarely face their sin and not feel condemned. We know that sin is a reality and one that we deal with every day. So how can we deal with it and not be consumed by the reality of it? I believe it is only by firmly believing that God is greater than our sin and by recognizing that sin is definitely part of the human condition. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Therefore, all are made right with God through the blood of Christ. What shall we say to all this? Are we to remain in sin in order that God's grace might multiply and overflow? Now, Paul was bringing the grace message, telling people that they were forgiven by the grace of God, that no matter how much sin there was, that God's grace would abound and, and override that sin. And so just like people always do, they always kind of get out of balance with everything. And so now they're kind of trying to take it, you know, to an extreme. And let me say that we have a lot of teaching floating around today about grace. I just did a brand new series on grace. I love teaching on grace. I love teaching on the mercy of God, the goodness of God, the love of God. But I will also tell you that that's not the only thing and all that we need to hear. Every once in a while, I need somebody to get in my face and say, don't do that. <laughs> Every once in a while, I need to hear a good message on you reap what you sow. <laughs> Every once in a while, now maybe you don't need them, but every once in a while, I need a good message on obedience. I, I love a good message on holiness. I love a good message on let's be led by the Holy Spirit. We need the whole counsel of the Word of God, not just one part of it. We got to have the whole thing. Amen. So, Paul came with a message of grace. And so they got all excited about grace. They said, well, maybe we just ought to sin a whole lot so we can have a whole lot of grace. Now, you might think that nobody would be that dumb, but... And Paul said, certainly not. How can you who died to sin live in it any longer? So the Bible says that we are dead to sin. And if you look at Romans 6, verse 11... It says, even so, consider yourselves dead to sin and your relationship to it broken, but that you are alive to God, living in unbroken fellowship with Him in Christ Jesus. So he's saying, now, you're dead to sin, so how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as sin being a real problem in your life and something that you can't handle? Or do you say, I am dead to sin, I consider myself dead to sin, I'm not going to get up today and be afraid I'm going to sin. I actually believe that I'm going to be led by the Holy Spirit and I'm going to walk in righteousness today. Okay, now, you say, now listen, you say, well, if I'm so dead to sin, then why am I still sinning? Are you ready? Because we're dead to sin Nowhere in the Bible does it say that sin is dead. <laughs> so, 
the devil chases us around. Temptation, which by the way is not sin. To be tempted is not sin if you use your sanctified willpower to say no. Now see, we'd rather think we can't help it. Well, if, if, if I just wasn't tempted, well, you can forget that. You can just, you know, I didn't feel real great when I first got up this morning. I kind of pulled a groin muscle last week working out, and so I got up. And I, I had a little headache. And, you know, then I couldn't find something I was looking for, and I went, well, you know, these people never put stuff where they're supposed to put it. <laughs> And I had to just get hold of myself right away. Okay. Okay, Miss Preacher. Straighten your attitude up. You got to resist the devil at his onset. Resist him at his onset. I was tempted. I was tempted right there early this morning to get a bad attitude. And running around all over the world for 37 years, preaching to people, want another conference. Here we are. I didn't like that bed. There's no light in this place. The bathroom's too little. <laughs> Come on. Sin is not dead, but I'm dead to it. I don't have to let that attitude infest me and work it out in my attitude toward people all day, every day. Is anybody home here this morning? You know what? Why I would ever complain about this is beyond me because I begged God to let me do this. I mean, for years, I was like, oh God, you gotta use me, God, God. Oh God, I wanna go to the world, I wanna go to the nations. Oh God, please, let me do big conferences all over the world. Oh God, 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 please use me. Oh yes, God, I wanna be on TV, I wanna be on radio. Oh God, help me, help me. <laughs> Are you sure you want that? Oh God, I need a bigger house. I gotta have a bigger house. And then a week later, oh my God, I gotta clean this big house. I'm so. <laughs> Come on. Oh God, I wanna have kids. Lord, I just want a dozen kids. Please, God, give me kids, kids. I love kids. I gotta have kids. Oh my God, if these kids don't grow up and get out of here, I'm gonna lose my mind. Oh, I want to be married, God. Please, please, please. I want to be married, God. I got to oh, give, just give me a man, God. I got to have a man. Oh, God, why did you give me this man? Come on, is anybody home in the house today? You know, when Jesus was tempted, not to go to the cross and fulfill the will of God, which by the way, he was tempted. Amen. It wasn't easy for him to obey God. And he said, your will be done and not mine. Here I am, oh God, come to do your will. How about that every morning? Lifting up those hands. Here I am, oh God, come to do your will. How about if we get wise enough to say, God, I know I'm going to be tempted today because I know the devil hates me. But I believe in the Holy Ghost through your wisdom, wisdom and strength that I can resist that temptation. And I'm grateful, God, that if I do fail or fall, that, I, that your forgiveness has already been bought and paid for. I know you love me unconditionally, but God, I want to take hold of those things that you died to take hold of me. I want to live the life that you provided me. Come on. We don't try to do what's right to get little check marks on our heavenly, have you been good today calendar? God is not needy. We're not doing God a favor when we read our Bible. I remember thinking, that, oh, I, I need to read this so God don't get mad at me. And I heard the Lord saying, well, no, you ain't doing that for me. I already know it. I wrote it, remember? Every time that you read your Bible, you're doing yourself a favor. So if we, if we see it not as a law, but as something we choose to do, 
then why would we not want to choose more and more and more? Dead to sin. Consider yourself dead to sin. Sin is not dead. But there's a part of you that wants nothing to do with it. The deepest, most holiest part of you, your beautiful spirit, your born-again spirit that God lives in. You are the home of God, and He lives deep in your heart. And that part of you does not want to sin. It hates sin. It abhors sin. But we also have a soul, which is that kind of next layer of our being, our mind, will, and emotion. And then beyond that, we even have a flesh. And so we have to learn to live deeper. And we have to go with what's way down deep in here, not what we feel like. I didn't feel much like coming over here this morning when I got up. Now, don't be insulted. I'm just trying to be real with you. Darlene woke up at 2 o'clock this morning. Darlene woke up with, she got jet lag. She's been awake since 2 o'clock this morning. Maybe she didn't feel like coming over here this morning. I can't do that much or I'll have to get carried out. But Please listen to me. You don't have to feel like doing the right thing to do it. <laughs> Please, you don't have to feel like doing it to do it. We have too many passive people. You know what a passive person is? Somebody who sits around and they're like, they, they, they want to do the right thing. But they wait to be moved by some outside force. <laughs> Honestly, it's just like, you've got the power of the Holy Ghost. God's given you a free will. He wants you to use your will to choose His will. And the moment you do that, God hooks up with you, and there is no devil in hell that can keep you from being successful. And I'm not talking about just willpower. Let me tell you, I'm a... I'm a huge fan of needing the grace of God. We cannot change except by the grace of God. We cannot change other people. God's got to change them. We can't be saved except by the grace of God. We need to live by the grace of God. But we also need to understand that we have that grace, and that grace is not just the ability to forgive our sins. It's also the power to teach us how to overcome sin. Did you hear me? You don't have to live in it. You don't have to live in bondage to addictions. You don't have to live in bondage to bad habits. You don't have to have a bad temper. You don't have to find 10 new reasons every day to be mad at somebody. Amen. You can live with peace. You cannot be selfish and self-centered. You can enjoy every single day of your life, no matter what's going on around you. You say, lady, you are crazy. Nobody can live a life like that. Oh, yes, they can. I'm living it, and I was so far away from that, it was pathetic. You don't know what a mess I was. You just don't know what a mess I was. But I remember when I saw that in Philippians, I am determined to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus died to take hold of me. I'm asking that something would have come alive on the inside of you today, and that little just spark of knowing who you are in Christ would rise up, and you could say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, let me give you a practical example of this thing about being able to do what you want to do. How many, do you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. Nah, not so many of you. I'll go over here and try it. How many of you think if you really want to do something, and I'm not talking about something that's outside of the will of God, but I'm talking about if it's something that God has, you know, I can't just go be a great singer because I want to. That's not the kind of stuff I'm talking about. But let's just say that I see that there's, you know, something lacking in my life, and it's a godly principle that I know that God wants me to develop. Now, I can say to God, okay, God, I, I, I really want to be, I want 
to be a kind person. I want to be a kinder person. Well, God's going to help me, and the first thing he's going to give me is many opportunities <laughs> to practice. Yeah. See, we want to get all this stuff transplanted. I'd love somebody to just transplant kindness on me. My administrative assistant is so nice. Oh my gosh. When I need to be nice to somebody and I don't think I've got what it takes, I send her. <laughs> oh, she is so nice. Now I might never be quite that nice, but I can be as nice as God wants me to be. Amen. Uh, let me just give you an example. Let's, let's talk about exercise a minute. Can we do that? Not so much. Don't want to do that so much. No. Well, how many of you know you ought to do it? Everybody agrees. How many of them believe, how many of you even believe it would be a godly thing if you did it? Because you're taking care of your body. Yeah. Not everybody put their hand up on that. You don't want to get God involved, but that's all right. Okay, now my husband tried for years to get me to exercise and work out, and I, I don't have time. I do not have time. Anybody as busy as me, I do not have time. God is just going to have to take care of that. <laughs> because I just do not. And I believe that. I believed that I did not have the time. I believe that. So when I got to be around, let's see. <laughs> about 62. One morning I was getting dressed and I looked at myself in the mirror. And I don't know if God just opened my blind eyes or what, but I thought this is not good. Because a lot of stuff that used to be up here had gone somewhere else. And I, I'm telling you, God just spoke to my heart. And this was basically what came to me. If you don't start working out on a regular basis, you are not going to be strong for the last third of your journey. Amen. So I want you to know that I go to the gym three days a week for you. So I can keep trying to get some common sense into everybody. I mean, really, my husband laughed at me when I told him I was going to go. He's like, yeah, I'm going to go watch this. Because I would, I would say I was going to exercise and I'd do it two days and get sore and then I'd quit. You know, it's kind of like a diet. It's easy to go on a diet when you're full. We all go on a diet after Thanksgiving. After, it's so ridiculous, really. And so I started this eating and workout program the day before Christmas. And my family thought I was nuts. But I'm the kind of person, once I make my mind up, it's like, well, let's just do the hardest part and get it over with. Long story short, not bragging on myself, I've been doing it now these seven years this December. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Why do I have the time now if I didn't have the time then? Because now I want to do it. And then I didn't want to do it. I'm just being honest. Hey, I know this is hard. I know that. I mean, we, we want to keep our excuses. We love, I can't. We love, it's too hard. But let's just get a new mindset today. Anything that God wants me to do, anything that God shows me to do, he gives me the power to do it. Now, here's the thing. You may not feel that you have the power to do it, but here's when it comes. Here's when the anointing comes to do whatever God tells you to do. You're like, wow, I did that. Praise the Lord. I did that. Amen. Oh my 
gosh, they sent me home with two 45-minute workouts, and I didn't know that you were supposed to do them on two different days. <laughs> and at the age of 62, never having worked out in my whole life, I was going at this one hour and a half every day. I was so sore. I had to fall on the toilet and believe God to be able to get up. Oh, painful, painful, painful. <laughs> Matthew 5, 6. We're having more fun than ought to be legal. Oh, I love this scripture. <laughs> you just see the way you guys look when I tell you you can do whatever you want to. It's like. <laughs> Blessed and fortunate and happy and spiritually prosperous in that state in which the born-again child of God enjoys his favor and salvation are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now, maybe your experience is not like mine, but if I get hungry, I'm talking hungry, I will get something to eat. Amen? If we had that kind of spiritual hunger, where we were hungry for righteousness, now we are right with God, we have righteousness in us, but if we get hungry to see that worked out through us, if we're hungry enough to hear good teaching that's going to really keep us on the straight and narrow of life. One of my friends sent me, a matter of fact, she's a minister. She sent me a picture the other day of her watching me on television. She said, I'm getting my morning butt kicking from Mama Joyce. She said, this keeps me on the straight and narrow of life. We need it all. We need encouragement. We need edification. We need to know that God loves us. We need to know that he wants to do things for us, that he's merciful to us. But we also need to know that God is a God of justice and that sin does bring consequences. Even though we can be forgiven for any sin, it does have consequences, especially if we just keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over, thinking that we can just get by with it. Hmm. Wow, this is fun. You know what? Whatever hang-ups you got doesn't matter to me if you conquer them today, tomorrow, six months from now. All I want you to do is have an attitude of, I am not going to live like this. <laughs> Did you hear me? That's all I want. Hey, I got stuff that I'm working through too, but my attitude is not to put up with it. That's, I'm just asking for a new attitude, an attitude that says, I'm not going to be satisfied with this. This is not the way I want to live. I'm determined to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus died to take hold of me. I want to have that life that he bought and paid for with his blood. Are you with me? Can we at least do that? Let's look at 1 Peter 5, 8, and 9. Be well balanced, temperate, that's disciplined, sober of mind, that means serious, be vigilant, that means aggressive, and cautious, that means living carefully, at all times. Not once in a while. For that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Everybody shout out, it's not going to be me. <laughs> Withstand him. Be firm in faith against his onset. I love that. The minute the devil makes a move against you, the minute you feel temptation, that's when you start praying and resisting it. What did Jesus do in Gethsemane? He prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed. 
And he wanted his disciples to pray with him, and they all let him down and went to sleep. So he prayed by himself, and guess what happened? God sent angels to strengthen him. Come on now. God sent angels to strengthen him so he could make it all the way through that temptation. The Bible says that he resisted so much that he sweated blood. It's not going to hurt us to resist temptation. I can't help it. I'm just tempted. Resist it. Let me tell you something. If you are a minister of the gospel, with all the love that you can find, you love your people enough to tell them the truth. Don't you dare just tell them what you think they want to hear so you can get another offering next week. You be sure that you tell them the truth in love and God will always take care of you and you'll have more people than you'll know what to do with because people are looking for the truth. Amen? I'll tell you one thing, you can believe it or not, but I'm doing this because I love people. Otherwise, I would be in my rocking chair with one of my grandbabies. <laughs> Resist the devil at his onset. I don't think when Jesus was in the garden, he just thought, well, I'll just wait and see how bad this gets. Well, I don't quite feel like coming against the devil right now. I just, maybe he'll go away on his own. <laughs> and the best way to resist temptation is to start to pray. Help me, God. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Help me. You're my strength. I believe that I can do whatever you ask me to do through God who strengthens me. Go to Romans 8, 13. For if you live according to the dictates of the flesh, you will surely die. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, if through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually putting to death, making extinct, deadening the evil deeds prompted by the body, you shall really and genuinely live forever for all who are led by the Spirit of God or are the sons of God. You can't do it by yourself. Every day when I go to work out, I say, God, help me. Every day, every day, every day, every day, because I am not stupid. I know that if I don't ask God to help me and I start thinking, well, praise the Lord. Piece of cake. Pretty soon I'll get up some morning and just think, there's no way that I can go do this today. I just can't do it. So I pray all the time for God to help me. No matter how good you think you are at something, always pray for God to help you. Did you hear me? No matter how good you think you are at something, always pray for God to help you because the only reason that you're good at it to start with is because God has already helped you. I mean, do you honestly think that I would get up here and try to preach without begging God, God, help me, help me, help me, help me. I mean, if you really heard my prayers before I got here, you might not think, I don't think I want to go hear her because she don't sound like she knows very much. And then I get up here and I open my mouth and sometimes it's like an explosion like it is today. It's like, Bleh! Amen? And you better come back tonight to see what happens because I never know till we get here. Dave said this morning and he'll tell you, he said, I'm looking forward to hearing the message. I said, me too. <laughs> it's not that I don't come with a plan. I've got a plan, but God is in control. Amen? Hunger and thirst after righteousness. Believe that you don't have to just sin. Feel guilty. Repent. Spend another two weeks or so still feeling guilty because now you've got to pay for what you did wrong. Then you finally crawl out from under that. Sin again. There's a better way to live than that. Amen. There's a higher way to live. That's where we start, but that's not where we ought to end up. We need to know enough about God to know the devil's tempting me. I'm resisting it. I'm dead to sin. I'm not going to live in sin. The power of God is on the inside of me, and I can do whatever I need to do through Christ to strengthen.